स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया and we move on to a very very crucial result of the regarding the reduction of our uh, functional to a reduced order hamilton uh, reduced order euler lagrange condition right so essentially we are going to talk about conservation laws variational symmetry and the famous noether's theorem okay so let me also so the topic that i am going to introduce in this half of our discussion is all about noether's theorem so a, a little bit of a trivia noether was a german mathematician whose major contribution in mathematical physics was this noether's theorem which came in the early half of the 19th century and which connects uh, which connects the various symmetries of the problem into a reduced order equation known as the conservation law which we are going to see in a very simple form in this topic of discussion okay so so now so what is a conservation law so let us consider let us consider a functional j of y which is equal to integral from x0 to x1 f of x comma y comma y prime to y of n dx right let me call this as 1 so this is a functional with with the derivatives up to n order now suppose suppose there exists a function phi of x comma y comma y prime comma y n right so there exists a function let let us say this derivative is, is up to kth order suppose there exists a function up to kth order such that such that d d x of phi which is also equal to x comma y prime comma uh, y kth derivative uh, this is equal to zero suppose we have a function whose the derivative is zero then uh, well let me call this as 1 and this as 2 right and uh, so this is equal to zero for all extremals for all extremals y of j right so so suppose we have a function whose derivative is shown equal to zero for all the extremals y of the original functional j uh, then then in 2 in 2 i see so this 2 this relation is known as the kth order conservation law 2 is called is called the kth order conservation law okay okay for j kth order conservation law for j okay so right okay so we have seen conservation laws in the past well i'll just quickly recall notice this function h is equal to y prime del f del y prime minus f we have seen this conservation laws this is the the first order conservation laws we have seen it in our beltrami identity this is a first order conservation law of the functional conservation law of the functional of the functional of the form jy which is integral of x0 to x1 of f of y comma y prime dx right so this is my first order conservation law of this functional we have seen that in our beltrami setup so then uh, we can also replace remember this is uh, well 2 is the case when we have only one independent variable suppose we have multiple independent variables uh, so what i am saying is uh, uh, so for functions for functions of several independent variables several 
independent variables right suppose we have uh, t 1 t 2 t n so on uh, then 2 the function the the relation 2 is replaced is replaced by the result divergence of phi is equal to 0 right so so we see that for functions of several independent variable the result 2 is replaced by divergence of phi is equal to 0 right okay so then uh, so divergence of phi equal to 0 okay so the euler lagrange remember so what is the advantage of working out through all these conservation laws because suppose my k the conservation law is a function is a relation of up to functions of order k suppose k is n is less than or equal to n it can at most be equal to n if it is less than or equal is it is less than n then we have found a relation uh, whose solution is also giving us the extremal y but the relation is of reduced order which means that we have to solve a lower order differential equation as compared to the euler lagrange equation or a simpler equation so what have i said is the following so so in general euler lagrange in general euler lagrange equation for for one is of order is of order 2n and if i have that k is less than 2n uh, then k is less than 2n then 2 if k is less than 2n then 2 is a lower order a lower order uh, differential equation lower order differential equation for the extremals it is a lower order ex, uh, differential equation for the extremals uh, uh, which were extremals or the solution the solution of the Euler Lagrange equations right. So, this is a lower order differential equation for the solutions for the extremals which were the solutions of Euler Lagrange equation and that lies in in this statement lies the power of conservation laws ok. So, let me just briefly mention what is so once we have the what is uh, the significance of Noether's theorem we will introduce that a little bit later. So, Noether's theorem says that the links the links between uh, the, the links between Noether's theorem provides us the links between the conservation law and the so called invariance property of the functional right. So, it links conservation law conservation law and and links conservation law with with the invariance with the invariance properties with the invariance properties of the functional right. So, it basically tells that if you give me invariance laws sorry invariance properties I can find out the conservation law. So, that is in just the theorem right. So, the key which means that the key to finding the key to finding conservation laws conservation laws the key to finding conservation laws lies in finding symmetries lies in finding uh, symmetries right or uh, the invariance properties of the functional. So, right now in this topic of discussion in this lecture we will just assume that the symmetries exist or the invariance properties exist we will show that we will look at only those examples for which we know the invariance properties and from there we are going to derive the conservation laws. In the next lecture we will we will highlight a method of finding these symmetries ok. So, let us continue. So, symmetries so what are symmetries? So, symmetries are transformation symmetries are transformations under which 
under which the functional under which the functional is invariant symmetries are transformation under which the functional is invariant okay okay fine okay so let us let us look at the topic of variational symmetries now what are variational symmetries let me introduce that and how does it help our cause that we will see so we consider again we consider the functional the simplest form of the functional to begin with j of y is equal to uh, is equal to integral from x0 to x1 uh, of f of x y y prime dx and let us let us now let us consider a one parameter family of transformation right so consider consider a one parameter a one parameter family of transformation one parameter family of transformation and let us call this uh, the x component be theta of x y epsilon. So, my one parameter family is the parameter epsilon and my y component is y of well I call this function as psi which is a function of x y and epsilon. So, my uh, so my original coordinate axis is x y let us talk ab about the problems in 2D and my new coordinate axis is capital X capital Y and theta and psi <coughs> theta and psi represents the transformation from the original to the new coordinate system okay where so let me call this so far we have numbered uh, we have numbered 1 and 2 so let me call this uh, this transformation function as 3 where where theta and psi are smooth functions where theta and psi are smooth functions of x y epsilon right and we also require the following constraint we say that we put the constraint that theta of x y 0 that is at epsilon 0 theta goes back to our identity transformation right so psi of x y 0 is equal to y right or what I am saying is the following. So, all so this constraint means that at epsilon equal to 0 uh, corresponds corresponds to the identity transformation ok. Ok. So, let us look at few transformations and let us see how does the functional behave under those particular set of transformations ok. So, so consider consider this transformation. So, consider the translational the translational transformations transformations Okay. So, we consider uh, the functions of the form x is equal to x plus epsilon and y is equal to y right and uh, I consider another set of transformation uh, x is equal to x and y is equal to y plus epsilon right right. So, these notice that each of these transforms correspond to the cases where we are translating one of the uh, coordinate axis by epsilon ok. We can also consider another set of transformation uh, also known as the rotational the rotational transformation let us say that the coordinates are capital X and capital Y given by X cos epsilon plus Y sin epsilon and minus X cos epsilon plus y cos epsilon right. So, these are my rotational transforms we can check well then let me also introduce the concept of Jacobian 
the Jacobian of transformation. The Jacobian of the transformation, which is given by partial x y, partial x y. This is also equal to the matrix. Well, the way we have described the transform, uh, the transformation, theta x, theta y, psi x, uh, psi x, psi y, right? So notice that this will has, this has determinant, this has determinant. Uh, delta of x comma y comma epsilon this is also equal to theta x uh, theta x well theta x psi y minus theta y psi x right and well we can see that the way we have described theta and psi we can see that delta of x y 0 is 1 delta of x y 0 is 1 and uh, also notice that the continuity of delta with respect to so what i am showing here is notice that at one value of epsilon the determinant is 1 so the determinant is non singular for epsilon equal to 0 and if my functions theta and psi they are continuous then we expect that in the neighborhood of epsilon equal to 0 the determinant is non zero or the transformation is non singular right so what i am saying is uh, the continuity the continuity of delta with respect to uh, epsilon indicates indicates that delta of x comma y comma epsilon uh, is non zero right so this is non zero for epsilon much much less than 1 or close to zero right okay so we call we call this setup. Uh, let me uh, let me also call this set of uh, express this set of arguments by denote it by a. So I am going to refer these arguments later on when we will use in certain problems by a. Okay. So then, so a means a means that our transformations are 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 uniquely determined in the neighborhood of epsilon equal to 0 they are invertible because the determinant of the jacobian is or the jacobian is uh, non zero which means that we can readily find the inverse right of the transformation so a implies that the transformation the transformations given by 3 well what is 3 that is what we began with so the transformation given by this 3 so we are always going to refer to our most general form of transformation by our expression 3 okay so the transformation 3 uh, the transformation 3 has a unique inverse as a unique inverse has a unique inverse uh, and which means that once we are given capital xy in the form of small xy we can also write small xy in the form of capital xy so this is capital theta of x y epsilon and this is y is equal to uh, small psi of x y epsilon right let me call this relation by by 4 okay so uh, for example uh, let let us recall our example of the translational invariance. Uh, sorry, the translational uh, the translational transformation, right? So the inverse of the transformation that we stated here. Look at this a and b. The inverse of the transformation we stated. Inverse of a is given by uh, so in terms of small x and small y is x minus epsilon, and y is equal to capital Y, and the inverse of b is given by x equals x cos epsilon minus y sin epsilon y is equal to x sin epsilon plus y cos epsilon right so i can readily find the inverse uh, this is well this was uh, this was the inverse in the case of c which was the rotational transformation we discussed okay so we can readily check that these are my results for the inverse right 
Now, further uh, these two relation tells that notice that we have uh, two unknowns small x and small y in this inverse relation and we have two equations which means we can readily eliminate one of the unknowns let us say x right and write down y as a function of capital X and epsilon. So, let me call this this x. So, what what I am saying is from my inverse relation from 4 from 4 what I say is one can one can eliminate one can eliminate x and find y y as a function of y as a function of x and epsilon one can eliminate x and fi find y as a function of x and epsilon. For example, uh, if we go back to our case study of this uh, inverse of a. Uh, so, from a let us do this exercise for example, in a. So, I know that my in my translational invariance case small x is capital X minus epsilon and small y is capital Y of x, but x is capital X minus epsilon. So, this is small capital Y of x minus capital X minus epsilon right. I call this function as y epsilon of x right y epsilon of x ok. So, so this is my setup. So, so that is what I just said. Now, again for c we can repeat this exercise in c to see how we can eliminate one variable. So, in c in my uh, rotational example rotational transformation case uh, let us let us assume. So, assuming assuming y of x is equal to x I see that my x was given to be I, let me write down the expression x is x cos x cos epsilon minus y sin epsilon and this is set equal to y. So, this means that this is also equal to y and uh, this is also equal to x sin epsilon plus y cos epsilon right. So, x is this and y is this ok fine. So, from here I can find y as a function of x. So, from here what I see that my y epsilon of x is cos epsilon minus sin epsilon divided by cos epsilon plus sin epsilon of x ok ok. So, so well so then I also need to introduce uh, some notation. So, the notation that I have is I also need to introduce the derivative of these new functions in this new coordinate system. So, the notation is y dot of epsilon of x we see that this is d d x of y epsilon of x right. So, this is my definition of y dot uh, also. So, so, so from 4 from my inverse relation I also need to find from this relation I also want to find y prime of x or d y d x where y is small y and x is small x ok. So, I need to find the derivative. So, from, from 4 I see that my d x is equal to is equal to theta x plus theta y uh, y dot epsilon of x right. So, this is also equal to d x and my uh, my d y is my transform my uh, is the following expression this is psi x plus psi y times y dot epsilon of x right d y d x ok. Ok. So, from here from here what I see is that y prime of x y prime of x is d y d x y prime of x is d y d x we can take the necessary we can divide 2 by 1 this expression I see that this is also equal to psi x plus psi y y epsilon dot of x divided by theta x plus theta y 
uh, theta y dot of epsilon of x, right? Okay, so that is what we have for the relation for y prime of x. So from here, what we have, uh, we are ready to describe uh, the concept of variational symmetries after all this setup, after all this background. So what are variational symmetries? Okay. Before even that, let me also introduce the concept of a functional being variationally invariant. So what do I mean by that? The integrand, so the integrand, the integrand f of x comma y comma y prime of the functional, the integrand of the functional j in our uh, original functional uh, relation uh, in 1. So that is how I am numbering. So if we go back, our 1 is, uh, one is uh, this relation here, the functional, the setup of the functional and uh, the functional, suppose the integrand of the f of the functional j in 1 is called variationally, is variationally variationally invariant is variationally invariant over over the relation over the interval x0 to x1 under under the transformation under the transformation under the transformation 3 so it is root variationally invariant under the transformation uh, under the transformation 3. So, here is the transformation uh, that we, so ag again always I am going to refer 3 by my original set of transformation theta psi. Okay? So, the, this integrand is variationally invariant under this transformation 3. If for small uh, value of the parameter epsilon in a sub interval, in a sub interval uh, a b, which is a subset of x naught x 1, right? My integral of a to b of f of x y y prime d x is integral of a epsilon to b epsilon uh, of f of f of x y prime y epsilon y epsilon dot of d x, right? So, which means that uh, where, let me complete this statement, where, where a epsilon is the mapping, uh, the mapping theta evaluated at the starting point a, uh, a times y of a comma epsilon and my b epsilon is my psi of, well not psi, but the same mapping because we are trying to map our uh, our variable small x to capital X. So, theta of b comma y of b comma epsilon, right. So, that is my variable this, okay. okay. So, what have we got here? So, we are saying that suppose we are able to, uh, we are able to find a transformation given by 3 and under that transformation the integrand has the same form whether it is in this coordinate system small x small y or capital X capital Y, they, if they have the same form over a sub interval, then the, the functional is variationally invariant, right. So, the integrand is variationally invariant, okay. And then the second statement says that the transformation, if I see that the integrand is variationally invariant, then the transformation in that case, the transformation 3 is known as the variational the variational symmetry, the transformation 3 is the variational symmetry of J, okay. 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 So, so what have we got here? Let us look at all these statements through some examples. Then the idea will be clear, okay. Okay. So, let us look at an example. So, let my x0 be 0 and x1 be 1 and f of x comma y comma y prime 
is equal to y prime square plus y square and we consider that we consider the transformation we consider the transformation x is equal to x plus epsilon and y is equal to y uh, that is our this is our translational transformation right okay so what we do is from here i can find what is y epsilon y we also we want to substitute y and we want to substitute y prime right so so from here from here i can see that my small x is capital x minus epsilon and my small y is capital y right and also from here i see that dx is capital dx and from here i see that uh, dy is capital dy or this is also equal to y epsilon dot times dx right or i see that dy dx the derivative of y with respect to x is y dot epsilon right y dot epsilon of x okay so what we see is that the integral from a to b y prime square plus y square of dx this integral is also equal to uh, we see we plug in y prime we plug in uh, y right now notice that the original interval was from a to b right when x was varying from a to b if x was varying from a to b capital x will vary from a plus epsilon to b plus epsilon using so using this relation i see that capital x capital dx for so capital x will vary from a plus epsilon to b plus epsilon right so in this interval y epsilon dot notice that once so let us see what is y prime so y prime is y epsilon dot so y prime so y epsilon dot square plus y square what is y square the uh, y square is capital y square right so this dx is equal to this and this is also equal to uh, so the functional form in this case is retained so i see that this is of the same functional form x comma uh, y epsilon comma y epsilon dot dx uh, a plus epsilon to b plus epsilon right so what i have shown here is that for this sort of transformation or the translational transformation my functional is my integrand of this functional is variationally invariant or has the same form to begin with right and which means that the transformation a so a is my variational symmetry a is my variational symmetry in this case so that is the transformation i am after okay let us look at the same variational symmetry for another integrand okay so let us continue looking at few examples more so the example i have is the following so example 2 so let again we set up x0 is 0 x1 is 1 and f of x y y prime this is also equal to now y prime square plus y square x so now my integrand is this so again we use uh, we use uh, again the same translational transformation x is capital x plus epsilon and y is equal to capital y right uh, yeah so from here uh, we see that Uh, for for this sort of transformation we see that y prime square plus y square when we plug well what have we got are we correct well x will be x minus epsilon again the same translation and transformation so if we plug all these so y prime square plus y square x will give us will give us y dot epsilon square plus x minus epsilon times y epsilon square and this is also equal to the same function notice let me write write it down like this this is also equal to y dot square plus x y epsilon square minus epsilon y epsilon square right notice that this is of the form f of x y epsilon y epsilon dot minus epsilon y epsilon square right okay 
So, what is the conclusion of this exam through this example? The conclusion is that A is not the variational symmetry because the functional sorry the integrand is not variationally invariant in for for A right. So, so which means that this is not so this of course this is not equal to f of x y epsilon comma y epsilon dot. So, this is not a uh, variational variational symmetry for for j which is the integral of f right ok. So, this gives us some perspective as to how to find variation well uh, to check whether a transformation is a variational symmetry or not. Now, in general students should be uh, it should be mentioned that students should check that the transformation of the type the transformation of the type capital X is equal to x plus epsilon and capital Y is equal to small y. This sort of a transformation is a variational uh, is a variational symmetry this sort of a transformation is a variational symmetry for for j given by this integral f of y comma y prime d x right well right. So, this sort of a transformation is a variational symmetry uh, where we have a integrand which is independent of x. So, this sort of a translational transformation will work. On the other hand suppose we have a translational transformation of the form x is equal to small x and y is equal to y plus epsilon right and then we see that this is a variational symmetry for for j which is given by uh, which is given by the functional of this form where the integrand is of this form. So, we can check this is a general result for integrals of this these two categories ok. 